Hello Thrivers, happy fun Friday. How is your Friday going? How is your week going? For everyone in those Southern states here in the United States, my heart goes out to you. I hope that you are on your way to recovery um, and that you've been safe and your families have been safe. Just wanted to put out some good vibes and let you know that you have all been definitely in our prayers and in our thoughts. I know that that can create a lot of disturbance. And so just wanna let you know that we are very mindful of you and are sending you a lot of love. So today I'm really, again, I'm really excited. This challenge has been uh, phenomenal. You guys have asked for this challenge and we've chose to focus on how to have great communication in your marriage. Going right off of our live stream from yesterday, we're gonna take it a little bit further. So yesterday we talked about how to assess where you are at in your communication level and how you even communicate with yourself, how you can improve that communication that you're having even in your own mind, because that is where everything originates. If you don't have love, respect, tenderness, forgiveness, um, and honor for yourself, how can you expect that to bring, bring that into your marriage, right? When you have that foundation, and that well within yourself that you can tap into, you are much more likely to find that and bring that into your marriage. So that is the challenge there. Today, we're going to go a little bit deeper into something that I'm titling this, what is even better than mind reading, right? We posted here a little while ago, like, I don't know, two or three weeks ago about if you could read your spouse's mind, would you? And a lot of people responded to that. It was awesome. Um, and a lot of people said that they would love <laughs> to read their spouse's mind. And other people were like, no way. I don't ever want to know what's going on in there. Um, but that brings up a really interesting issue that are we really understanding our spouses? Do we feel disconnected from them most of the time? Do we feel like we have no idea where they're coming from? We're at a loss. We don't even understand the things that they're doing or they are saying. And if that is where you feel like you are at, then today is all for you. And for those of you who feel like, you know what, I understand my partner most of the time, but I'd even like to deepen that. I'd like to take that even further, then you're still going to get a lot of value out of this. So I see several of you watching. Hello. How's your day going? Go ahead and let me know you're here. I always love to make these really interactive. Um, so feel lonely sometimes on the other end of my webcam. So I really appreciate, um, you letting me know that you're there, any comments, feedback, questions that you might have. I'd be more than happy to go into those with you today. So, um, yeah, so we're going to talk about, first of all, the opposite end of the spectrum of misunderstanding. Misunderstanding in marriage is one of the biggest plagues of marriage and in relationships in general. We tend to live in with, oh, hi, hi Mike, hi, Tank, how's it going? Awesome. Yeah, you don't know where your wife is coming from. That's what we're working on. Absolutely. So we'll go a little bit deeper into that. If you have a specific example or anything you want me to kind of dissect, go ahead and leave it in the comments and we'll definitely do that. Um, so yeah, this whole idea of misunderstanding. We all tend to live in our own little bubble, right? We live in, we see the world through our own lens. And that is one of the reasons why our experience is unique to us. It makes us unique but at the same time, it can also create this sense of dissonance between us and other people because they're coming from their own world, their own perspective, and things might look very, very different on their end. So how can we bridge this gap between where we are and where our spouse is and where they are coming from? So the challenge, hi, Kyle Selden, hello. I don't know where yours is at, but Hello. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for the comment. Um, yeah. So we want to be able to bridge that gap between you and your spouse. We can't mind read, but we can actually do something that I think is even better than mind reading. That would just be too, that'd be too easy, right? <laughs> that'd be too much of a shortcut. But being able to deepen your understanding of your spouse is one of the most crucial aspects to having good communication. So many times, do a little check-in here with yourself, it's okay, just be honest. Are you listening to respond or are you listening to understand? Are you listening with the intent of exactly like waiting for them to take a breath so you can jump right in and say what you wanna say? Or are you actually listening with the intent to really understand 
where they are coming from. And of those two models, which do you think is gonna get you where you wanna go faster? Which one's gonna help you? Which one's gonna open up your partner so that they respond in turn? They want to understand you. Think about two people that are both in a state of reaction, right? Or a state of understanding. The people that are in a state of understanding are gonna be able to come together, bridge that gap, and problem solve together. Does that make sense? Can you see the value of that? Tang says, I think she thinks I should be able to mind read. Ooh, well, yeah, we'll talk about that. I have to ask first. Is that wrong? What's your question exactly there? You have to ask her first about what's going on or what exactly do you mean? Let me know what that question is referring to. So first I'm gonna address this from Tank real quick, but um, I think she thinks I should be able to mind read. Okay, yeah, we hear this a lot from husbands that their, mo their, wi <laughs> their women and <laughs> their wives, <laughs> um, their wives and even their daughters, I'm gonna be fair. And this is a generalization, I'm not saying everyone is here but this is really really common and um it simply is something that comes up enough that it needs to be addressed so oftentimes we hear this that from the husbands my my wife speaks in code she wants me to guess at what she's talking about she wants me to guess at what she needs and when i don't meet that need then she gets mad at me and i feel like i'm being punished for things i don't even know what what they're for right and um as women, we sometimes and generally <laughs> um, feel like if he loves me, he would understand that. If he really knew me, he would know what my needs are. He would know why I'm so upset. He would know what he did wrong and he would know how to fix it and he would know exactly <laughs> what I'm wanting right now. And that, ladies, is not the best way to get our needs met. Okay, we need to give our husbands a break. Okay. We might be able to like vibe with each other or be able to like have some like, I'm not sure, like spirit to spirit connection where we can be intuitive with each other in some way. I do think that women have an ability to, to get each other a little bit better. Give our husbands a break, okay? That's not, that's just not in their, it's not in their programming and it's not fair to expect that. So here we are gonna come to um, being really clear and upfront about what we want. That's not exactly where we're going to with today. That's a little side note, but I understand the challenge, men especially. There are some other, other instances where this is flipped. We have seen that too. Sometimes where the men want the wives to read their minds, so it's not universally like a fact. But if you're in this kind of situation, I understand. It can be really, really challenging when your wife or your husband um, just wants you to guess at what you need how can you understand that? How can you understand speaking in code or references or inferences to what it might mean? And you have to put together this big giant puzzle so that you can come out and not lose somehow. That's a, that's a lose, lose battle. So we definitely want to give you better skills, better ways of understanding and communicating your needs, understanding your spouse's needs and meeting those needs so that it's not this like lose, lose situation never what we want to go for. Okay, I'm going back here to Tank. So she, he's asking how she would want me to handle it, whether I need to just listen or should I act on what she's about to tell me? Okay, so are you saying that she, okay, she thinks I should be able to read, mind read. So you have to ask her first and you're wondering if that's wrong to ask up front. So I've worked with Tank, so I think I know a little bit here that yeah, and Mike just said it. Um, hi, Tank, it's okay to ask, but maybe reassure her that you won't try to fix it or judge her feelings. Awesome. Yeah, really, really good. Let her own her, her sorry, I'm not a very good reader. <laughs> it's not like this little tiny screen. Let her own her feelings, but you may need to explain to her that you need a little time to process what she said. That way you can come back to it with more understanding. Boom. Okay, Mike, virtual high five. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really, really good. Thank you very much for sharing that. Yeah, it is absolutely okay. So men, if you feel like you're in this situation where your wives want you to mind read, they're playing kind of like word games with you. They're getting upset for things that you don't even understand why. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Mike, yeah. Um, 
that's exactly it. It's okay to ask because oftentimes what women need um, is more listening and men want to come in and problem solve. So even just asking, hey, do you want me just to listen here? Is, is that what you're looking for? Or do you actually want some solutions? Now, my husband went so far in just the listening mode that now I have to ask him. I'm like, no, actually, I want you to help me with the solutions because generally I just want him to listen. I want some understanding. Um, and so now when it's the opposite way, it's kind of funny because I'm the one that's like, I'm trying to pull him out of him, like, because he's so hesitant to offer um, solutions because he doesn't want to give too many solutions when I want listening, if that makes sense. So that's an interesting little dynamic in than um, my relationship with Ben. Um, so we really are clear and upfront. Yeah, that's absolutely okay to ask. So I'm really glad that you asked. I think a lot of people are going to resonate and have the same kind of struggle there. All right. So here's a question for you guys. How often do we think we know exactly what someone meant by what they said or did only to find out that we were dead wrong? How many times have you had something happen where you're like, this is, they must have been like really mad at me. They must have thought, wow, that person, I don't really like that person. And you found out that the opposite was actually true. That whatever reaction or, you know, words that they might have said to you made you think that was completely wrong. And how often has your spouse actually done that to you where they completely misread your intentions about something, right? You had the best of intentions and maybe they interpret it in the worst way. Nothing, nothing, I'm going to say this as a statement, but nothing feels worse than being misunderstood. We want people to understand us, but are we communicating with them in a way that shows them understanding and conversely, eventually as we build this up, they will show us understanding in return. That's the goal here. Tank says all the time. Yeah. <laughs> we have a funny, I guess a funny running joke in my family, inside joke, but I'm going to let you know because it's really good. No, <laughs> um, But we have this joke in my family. We have one of our sons, our older son, that he constantly takes what we say and he thinks the opposite is true. And this is just like this weird thing to me that he kind of like flips what we're saying and takes it to this totally different place. So um, like an example of that, we were talking about uh, a family trip and everything. And he's like, wait, we're moving, you know? So he takes one thing and he, he just takes it to this other place. So he has a difficult time understanding us. And honestly, we have a difficult time understanding him sometimes. So we've made a kind of a joke that we're talking about chicken and he's like, beef, beef, you know? And so we make this funny joke now that whenever there's a misunderstanding and Ben and I do this all the time, um, oh wait, you're going to pick up the kids? Beef. No, I was talking about going grocery shopping, not talking about the kids at all. So that's kind of how this kind of becomes. And I like that it's a funny joke now in our family that we can laugh about some of these complete miscommunications and misunderstandings. And um, so that happens all the time, even in happy, thriving relationships, even in happy homes, we do have these very common misunderstandings. So what we want to do is be the one to go first and be the one to start to develop listening with the intent to understand first, not waiting for our spouse to do it because we know that's the exact wrong approach. If you guys have been following us long enough, you know that that's only gonna turn them off and push them further and further away. So you need to be the one to allow the door to open. And this is one of the very first foundational principles that we teach is to bridge the gap by being the one to show some compassion and understanding to your spouse first. Why? Because that's going to allow them to open up, feel safer. They're going to feel understood. Remember we talked about misunderstood, worst feeling in the world. Being understood, one of the best feelings in the world. When you feel like someone actually gets you. That's beautiful. So that's the gift that we want to give our spouse. When you feel understood, you're going to be that much more willing to open up and they're, and, and, you know, they're going to understand you and you're going to understand them a lot better. So guilty as charged. <laughs> awesome, Dank. You're so great. <laughs> All right. So here are some suggestions here on what we're going to do exactly with this challenge today. 
as we strive to understand our spouse. So the challenge here is to have a conversation with your spouse with the only intent being to understand their perspective. Okay, so we're gonna listen, not to respond, not to judge, not to become defensive, but to show some empathy so that you can connect with them. And honestly, this is better than mind reading because you can understand them and exactly where they're coming from. And they will so appreciate that. Mind reading is a cheat. Right? If we just mind read our spouse, they would probably not appreciate that very much. But when they feel us understanding them, even if we completely disagree on something, when we understand where they're coming from, that will help bridge that gap. So um, what we like to do is let them know right off the bat the purpose of the conversation is that you just simply want to understand where they're coming from. I just want to understand you, your feelings are important to me. I just want to know where you're coming from. You are an important person in my life. And I would really like to get to know you a little better and, and to understand your perspective on this. Okay, so we want to frame it in that way. Now, here are some good questions to ask. And we'll go a little bit deeper into these. This is in the post, but um, asking them, you know, what was the best part of your day? How did that make you feel? We ask these really great open-ended questions. Why did you feel that way? What did it mean to you when that happened? Okay. So, hey, Jennifer. Awesome to see you, girl. She says, listen with the intent of obtaining heartfelt understanding. Absolutely. Yeah, we actually turn out heartfelt communication. So that's beautiful. The intent to obtain heartfelt understanding. When you can connect with someone like, okay, I might completely disagree with your opinion. I might disagree with where you're coming from, um, not um, with what you're doing, but I understand where you're coming from. That's what I meant to say. So um, we'll, we'll go through these with a couple different examples. Um, okay, I did get a question. I'm gonna come to that one in just a minute here. I appreciate the hearts, thanks guys. So let's say that you and your spouse just got into a major disagreement, let's say over how to handle, how to handle like your children. This is a, par a parental disagreement. And you feel like a really softer, gentler approach is necessary, but your spouse comes in and they're bringing out, <laughs> they're bringing out, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but you know, they're bringing out the big guns, metaphorically, of course, um, and they're coming at a very, with a firm hand. Maybe they, you know, they spanked or something or um, got very, very angry with this child for this behavior. And so your perspectives are completely, completely different. And it creates a fight between you. Why did you do that? Well, you're not doing this and this isn't working. Right, going that, that, that back and forth, right? That happens between partners. So you have a big disagreement here. You're seeing things two completely different ways, right? And so let's say that that kind of pans out. You let the steam off, right? You cool down and then you come back together and you say, I would like to understand your perspective. I'd really like to understand where you're coming from. And so you ask these questions, you know, you know, where were you coming from? What was your experience growing up? Any of these kind of questions, you know, why do you feel, I just want to understand why do you feel like that was the best thing to do? I'm not judging. Um, I know we don't see eye to eye on this right now, but I'm really trying to understand where you came from. And then you learn that in your spouse's background or whatever reason, that this was the best way to handle this kind of situation. Maybe they had a very a control sibling or something. And this was the way that the parents kept that child in line. And so to your spouse, this is the right way to do it. Now you can step back and you can be like, okay, I still don't agree with where you came from, but now I can understand your perspective. I understand why you feel this way about this situation. So there's an example there. If you guys want me to um, kind of dissect a different situation or anything, then we can definitely do that. Um, the whole point is though, that we all have these different perspectives. And so really understanding where your partner came from, maybe something traumatic happened in their past. Maybe they saw something that really made them scared 
at one time and they learn to shy away from that forever. You know, maybe on the opposite end, maybe you're the one that's really firm with your kids and your spouse wants a more gentle approach. Maybe that's because they saw some violence and they saw the damage that it caused. Maybe they saw that it, maybe they were even treated that way and they were scared and it was not a loving home and they are very fearful of that kind of behavior, right? And so then you can have some compassion and some understanding toward that person. Wow, I didn't know you felt that way. I didn't know this was such a big deal to you. Let's come together now and get on the same side of the table. We both want the same thing. That's an interesting thing. When you really get down to it, often you and your spouse, they really, you really want the same thing, but you're just coming at it in two different ways. So when you can get on the same side of the table, have some understanding toward each other, you can build from there. Okay, how can we make this work? How, can, how might we build a compromise? How could we create a plan about this or a solution to this that we both feel really good about because it gets to this end goal? So those are some of the things that if you're really stuck on this, getting some outside help, getting some guidance um, will really help facilitate that kind of conversation. Sometimes it's hard when you and your spouse are just completely completely on the opposite ends of the spectrum to be able to gain that. But the challenge here is to start to show some understanding. Okay, now here is a question um, from one of the ladies that posted and she said, how do you initiate this kind of conversation? Talking about those questions I posted earlier. Like what if he never brings anything up that those questions would be suitable for? Those questions like, how did that make you feel? Why did you feel that way? What did it mean to you? So I thought this was a really good question of how do you even initiate this conversation? What if your spouse, in this instance, it's the husband, never brings up anything that those questions would be suitable for? Okay, so here, yesterday, we talked about the assessment of where things are at. So, you know, you might be talking about some surface level things and not be able to have some of those deeper conversations. So wherever you're at, we're going to start there, if that makes sense. So maybe you're able to talk about some surface level things in this example, but you're not able to address maybe some of the deeper things because that turns into tension, that turns into arguments or whatever. So let's start with where you're at. So if you're able to talk about some surface level things like how was your day? How was that? How was work? How was your interview? Um, really great tip here. And I'll just give you one because I'm running a little bit short on time. But um, a really great tip is to ask open-ended questions rather than just short yes or no answers, right? How was your day? Fine. It was fine. Oh, okay. What was great? What was fine about it? What was your favorite part, right? Did you have any challenges this day? If the more you ask open-ended questions, the more it's going to open that, that door. So take a, a check in with yourself about what kind of questions you're asking. Start with where you're at. Just start to show some more understanding and um, compassion and interest in the level that you're at. And then that as you build some of that openness and that conversation, that will open the door to leading to even better and uh, deeper conversations. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you still have any questions about that or if any of you else have some suggestions. I know there's some really, really great suggestions here. Um, and then Gus, or Tank says, guys don't talk about feelings. It usually leads to crying and hurts. Okay, so putting up that wall there, right? They wanna be seen as tough. And so women often wanna know, how'd you feel about that, right? So that, like Gus is saying here, Tank, sorry, that um, there's probably some resistance to even wanting to open up because they don't wanna go there. They don't really wanna feel that. So that's why I said start with where you're at, right? Start about with those things that you can communicate about. If you can't communicate communicate about anything, you're on like the lower end of the scale, like we talked about a 9-10, where even simple conversation is difficult and there's tension about everything. Then we're gonna go deeper into that. Um, that's coming up in another challenge. So I will leave that for that time, just compartmentalize this. Like I said, everyone is at different stages. Everyone's at different points in their marriage. So unfortunately, some of the things I say don't apply to everyone. So I'm trying to give some general help that will um, help you with where you're at, hopefully, and be able to take those at a higher level, even higher, those at the middle level, get them up, and those at the bottom level that are really having a hard time communicating about anything, we will address that here coming up in the challenge. So, oh, thank you, Jennifer, you're so sweet. You're beautiful too. I really appreciate the work that you do. Um, so yeah. 
uh, go ahead and let's, let's apply this challenge. Let's do one small thing today. Let's just do one small thing. Ask some simple questions, but some deep questions with the intent to understand. Let's really listen to our spouses today and then comment and let us know how you did, what kind of a difference it made, what kind of a shift it made in you and in your perspective to realize that you learn some new things about your partner. You understand better now where they're coming from. And as you show that empathy and understanding to them, the difference that it will make in your spouse and in your marriage. So you guys are awesome. And I hope you have a fantastic, lovely day, fun Friday, have a thriving marriage and let's show our spouses some compassion, some understanding today and let me know how it goes. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks guys.